In today's video, I'm covering ultimate beneficial ownership. I will clarify how to identify UBOs, some of the regulations in place and where you can source company information for free. So let's jump right into today's video. Hi and welcome to Fin Crime Agent. I'm Marco Beranzoni and this is my YouTube channel where I'm talking about financial crime prevention and anti-money laundering related topics. Today's video is all about ultimate beneficial ownerships. What is the ultimate beneficial ownership? For those unfamiliar with the AML and financial crime sector, under the Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Prevention Act, ultimate beneficial ownership screening is is required for particular businesses such as banks, solicitors, estate agents, accountants and other regulated firms. The criteria used for anti-money laundering compliance are continuously evolving. In fact, a common phrase known by those working in the regulatory compliance industry is that change is the only constant. And due to these firms must stay on top of the ever-changing regulatory environment. However, the transparency of ultimate beneficial ownership is definitely one aspect being strengthened across regulations and jurisdictions. The AML industry expects all businesses to know who they are doing business with by determining the identity of the transaction's ultimate beneficial owner. Who is the ultimate beneficial owner of a company also known as the UBO? A UBO is typically defined as a person in a corporation who has substantial power at the top of the tree. Typically, the ultimate beneficial owner holds at least from 10 to 25% of the capital or voting right of the legal entity. During a transaction, the ultimate beneficial owner is the individual who ultimately owns a legal business or legal person. Some examples of ultimate beneficial owners may be anyone who has direct or indirect authority over the account holder, a power of attorney, shareholders or even guardians for people under the age of 18 years old. Looking at recent laws and regulations, the ultimate beneficial owner aspect is also touched within the fourth and fifth anti-money laundering directives. In fact, the EU's MLD4 also targets ultimate beneficial ownerships in a significant way. A UBO is determined under MLD4 when a legal entity owns or controls more than 25% of its shares of voting rights. In instances where this requirement cannot be verified, MLD4 enables senior management officials also to be considered as beneficial owners. The EU Fourth Anti-Money Laundering Directive further required EU nations to retain up-to-date ownership information in a central register that is available to authorities, obliged entities and public person with a genuine professional interest, such as journalists or NGOs. In January 2020, also the fifth anti-money laundering directive went live and it continued to look at beneficial ownership, introducing other measures demanding that Within 18 months after the fifth AMLD's implementation date, UBO's listing created under the fourth Money Laundering Directive must be made publicly accessible. Beneficial ownership regulations must also be followed by trusts and beneficial ownership information must be made available to authorities or those with a genuine professional interest. In order to promote collaboration and information sharing between state agencies, UBO national registries must be interconnected at the EU level. To guarantee that the information they contain is accurate and reliable, all member nations must improve the UBO verification process. And lastly, EU member countries must establish separate UBO records for bank accounts, which, unlike corporate UBO registers, will not be accessible to the public and will only be available to the authorities. How can banks identify UBOs of customers? 
They would first obtain the relevant documentation of the organization. The exact requirements vary, of course, by the jurisdiction, AML and content terrorist financing regulation standards. However, broadly, companies must provide complete and up-to-date information, often including the company's registration number, name, address, its official status, and the name of top management employees for verification of legitimacy and accuracy. Second, review the ownership chain. To do this, they would need to determine who owns a property of shares or interest in natural or legal person and also whether their ownership is direct or indirect. Third, ID and V of ultimate beneficial ownership determine which, if any, of each individual's total percentage of shares, managerial control and ownership interest fits within the definition of ultimate beneficial owner. And fourth, completing AML and KYC checks. All detected UBOs would have to go through relevant AML KYC checks in a consistent and efficient manner, filing regularly and retaining up-to-date information. Before we talk about where to find company-related information, let's also touch base on the risk to ensure all business relationships will be within the firm's risk appetite, there will be a risk rating assigned to customers, which can vary and therefore different approach will be required in line with the customer's risk level. Low risk customers. UBOs in the low risk category can authenticate their identification by signing a declaration containing their personal information. A visual uh, verification against identity documents is usually sufficient as well. Medium and high risk customers. Further analysis is necessary if the individual identified exhibits any possible exposure to terrorism or money laundering. Those can include additional searches to better analyze their customer's risk profile. Those are aimed to reveal any political exposure, negative media coverage and legal enforcement steps that may contribute to the risk. Examine the individual's source of wealth and money, looking for gaps across income, source of wealth and overall net worth of the customer. Obtaining extra information regarding the business relationships, the purpose and intended nature. Ensure is in place a frequent update about changes in substantial ownership. This is usually expected to be reviewed at least annually for high-risk customers. Now, where to get UBO's information? For UK registered companies, you can gather a number of information free of charge directly from the gov.uk portal. The company information details provided in there includes company information, for example, registered address and date of incorporation, current and resigned officers, document images, mortgage charges, data, previous company names, insolvency information as well. Gathering reliable company information internationally can be a bit more challenging. Private organizations can supply this type of data. However, besides the third-party data providers, most developed countries have now in place their own version of a company registry that should be publicly accessible. During my research, I found a useful link on the UK Company House website with a list of company overseas registries that specify on the portal that this is not a comprehensive list of all company registries located around the world. It is surely a great resource as it contains links to company registry for all those countries that you can see on the screen. I will leave in the description of this video, as usual, the link directing you to the gov.uk pages for both the UK company registry and this list of links to overseas registries. And with that, I'm at the end of today's video. If this video was useful to you, you can show your appreciation by subscribing to FinCrime Agent and like this video so you can consume more of this type of material when they get released on my channel. Also, remember to check the description to find some useful links, including how 
to become part of our community on patreon.com. Lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my video and until next time, see you soon.